wanted to talk to you guys about the digital divide. I'm not talking about poor people in Africa. I'm talking about my parents and me. <laughs> my dad is actually turning 80 next month. And of course, with COVID and everything like that, the, you know, the, the digital divide is very real in some ways. So let, let me begin with a couple of stories here. Now, for the longest time, I had my parents on this sort of like SIP to SIM VoIP system. So they basically had one landline, landline number. And then if you call that landline number, it rings the house. And then if they're not in the house, then it rings their mobile phone. And I did that just to keep things simple for them because I didn't want them to like top up the phone and manage different numbers and all the rest of it. It became more and more problematic. Um, like for example, uh, internet banking just wouldn't work because they wouldn't accept the landline number, uh, even though that landline number could accept SMSs. And similarly, uh, maybe my parents are exaggerating, they, um, since COVID times, they couldn't get like an appointment. So my dad couldn't get his like medicine without an SMS number, without a mobile number. So basically I did away with that SIM system and got them two mobile SIM cards, which they have to top up and manage all the rest of it. Um, and now they can access these services. So my first complaint is that I really hate how government services and banking services require uh, a mobile number yeah, because I don't really trust mobile operators with my identity and all the rest of it. But for some reason, these services do. I, I blogged about it, by the way. Link link in the description. You get locked out. You're divided if you don't have a mobile SIM number. Now, the second issue that my parents or elderly people face is that they might get stuck on some sort of process, some web form, for example. And usually, there's just no recourse, right? That You can't get support. Uh, have you ever seen a web form that has like, I don't know, an identifier where you can call up someone and say, hey, here's my ID, you know, FUBAR12345, and then they see the context of where you are? I, no. I, I, mean, they, I mean, most services don't, you know, allow you to email them. And this is like the number one reason why I set up a Twitter and a, a YouTube, if you look at my other YouTube channel, you can just see me complaining about various products and services, all because I'm like looking for support. I mean, th is this, I mean, this is the awful state of our service industry, is that, and my parents, you can't expect elderly people to have a Twitter account just to get support, but th I mean, this is the reality that we're living in right now, right? It sucks. Another thing I hate is like these, these virtual assistants, they, 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 they really have potential to help actually because they should be giving you like in, con in context help with a real person ideally. Like if you're browsing a product page and you have a question, instead like the usual experience is just awful. Like you, you type a message and you get like a automated weirdo response that's got nothing to do with what you asked for. And the, the most you can hope for is that, you know, there's a human in 10 minutes or something like that. I mean, guys, we can do better than this, can't we? So what inevitably happens, at least in my life, is that my, my I go on FaceTime with, where's my phone? Oh, I go on FaceTime with my mother and I ask my mother to basically point uh, the camera at, at, her, at her screen or something like that. Recently, I miraculously installed Zoom and you can share the screen and do remote control that way but often my parents just want to use their mobile phone or their ipad how do you remotely assist someone on a service who's using an ipad i mean you can't so and these problems need to be solved you need we need a way to assist someone um remotely on a form i mean ideally it's the the service provider uh, i don't know a way but you know answers below so yeah, this is the problem of our time, and at least for me it is. You know, like people, I hate in this industry how people talk about accessibility. Oh, there's no ARIA tags on that HTML page. I mean, there's just no support. Support is done just terribly. There's no recourse. 
for an average person. That's the real issue for me. Requiring silly things like an SM, a mobile number. That's a silly thing for me. So, what is your definition of the digital divide? Any one of you guys who thinks they need to take a mobile number, I mean, why? Couldn't it be email? And similarly, can you make sure that your contact email works? You know, like, don't have... I mean, this is this is the typical state of what... what my, I have a product question for Audlieb, and look at this, so many fields. Tiny text, never mind the little accordion here that I had to select. Um, and, and, and to top it off, I have to do a capture. Come on guys, we, we must do better than this. It really sucks at the moment. So please like to get this message out there. This is the digital divide. This bullshit here, make your form better. Thank you.